This, our next story, I tell you, I can't wait to speak to this woman because it's extraordinary, absolutely case of catfishing, the practice, that is, of assuming a false uh, background story in order to tra attract a romantic partner. Jill Owens was a sergeant with Haverford West Police when she fell head over heels in love with Dean Jenkins <clears throat> and after a whirlwind romance became pregnant with his son. The only catch, Dean was a criminal and was jailed for 17 years for his involvement in an armed robbery. She tells us her story now. Jill, thank you very much indeed for joining us. This is a most um, remarkable story. I mean... What 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 did you think? What did you think Dean's background was? I mean, what did he what did he masquerade as as being, and how, how were you taken in by it? Good morning, both. Um, well, he I met we met online. Uh, had had two sort of not unsuccessful marriages, so I thought, right, we'll we'll try. I'll, I'll go online and have a look online, and um, met him via the online dating site, and. Everything seemed pretty normal. Um, you know, I met his family. I went to his business. Um, we did normal things that a normal dating couple would do. I met his business associates. We went um, abroad. You know, I, all the things that you would consider to be normal, we did. Um, until but, but, I mean, that night on Halloween. I mean, it's quite shocking because not only was he an armed robber, he was also married. So you meeting his family and his people at his workplace, were they all in on his I don't, pretense, his pretend life? Well, this is the thing, because a lot of people have said, and it's, it's a continuous uh, common theme, of, oh, she must have known. But the thing was, it wasn't as if I didn't meet any of his family or I didn't know anything about his life. As far as I was aware, there was nothing really that was missing. So, you know, I always pose the question, well, how could I have known? And then I'm told, well, your police training, you know, you should have known through your police training. And I'm like, well, come on. You just wouldn't, you know, if everything seems to be normal in a relationship, you, you wouldn't think, oh, he, he's not with me this weekend. He must be out robbing a bank. Well, I have to say, oh, well, I, I'm not thinking he's not with me this weekend, he's robbing a bank, you're quite right, I wouldn't think that. But I would have thought, as a police officer, you know, you, you know, you met somebody online, he says this, that, the other, I would have thought, you would have thought, well, I'm going to check him out a little bit more, here's his name, here's where he comes from, can I do a little bit of a background check on him? Even well, with another, I don't know, do I... not do that? Maybe I'm too suspicious. Yeah. Well... Had I done that, I probably would have got disciplined because it would have been a misuse of the police computer. Um, but, you know, having had two failed relationships, it wasn't as if I sort of went into it blindly. And I wasn't, I'm not a, I'm not a silly person. You know, I would, I, I'm quite logical in the way I think. And th there was nothing, well, in fact, had I done a check on him, there would have been anything because he, he didn't have a criminal record at all. There was no record of him at all. So that wouldn't have helped. So um, how did you it, find out what happened to alert you to who he was and what he was about? The, the, the night I found out was Halloween and he'd been quiet. Perfect. He hadn't record, he hadn't, he hadn't returned my phone call. Um, so, and that was very unusual for him because he was very communicative via phone and, you know, all the time. Um, so I hadn't heard anything and then that evening went through to the to halloween the next day and then i had a phone call a text message from his sister saying you need to go to a phone box and call me and it was unusual in itself it's like a phone box why do i need to go to a phone box but because i hadn't heard from him and it was so unusual i went to the phone box i told the children at home i've, I've got to go and buy some milk and i went to the phone box and that's when i was told um somebody's been there's been an armed robbery uh one of them has been shot dead by the police i didn't know who um and i was like what you know what what on earth is going on that is the last thing that you would expect to hear um, so so then, while you were dating him he was planning the armed robbery so he, while you were dating he was planning and then he did it that's why you didn't see him and that's how you found out well, it, as it turned out, I mean, I, I found out all this information sub, sub, subsequently. I didn't know at the time, but he would be calling me before he did the armed robbery and and also after. So 
every time he did them. So I was being called before and after. Well, I didn't know he, where he was. He was in over. He was in London, but I didn't know that he was calling me before and after the armed robbery. So of course, you know, I, I'm sort of like when I was told that I was like, well, of course that I'm going to be investigated because. You know that that that's huge. That's a huge thing. But I but I just didn't know. I did Jill, not have a clue. And Jill, and even if I look back now, did this? Sorry, did this, if I look back now, go ahead, go ahead, Jill. I was just going to say, even if I look back now, and people say, well, when you look back, did you see anything? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all would have alerted me to 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 what was coming. Now, am I right in thinking that you had to leave the police force as a result as a result of this, Jill? Because if, if you did, I'd, I'd, why was that? Because as far as I can see, you're a victim uh, here. Um, so why, why did you no longer could, could stay in the police? Well, David Powers Police felt that uh, I should have known that he was a criminal. Um, they felt that. I brought the force into disrepute by association. Of course, we have uh, our son, Frankie, together, and there would always be that connection. And obviously, an armed robber and a police officer do not mix together. So as a result of that, the hearing, it's a, I wrote a book, Two Cops and a Robber, and the whole story of the hearing is within that book. But there was a lot of sort of um, <coughs> inconsistencies then in the police's case. Uh, if you read the book, you'll find out. And as a result of that hearing, I was required to resign. So it wasn't just a, re a failed relationship. It was well, my Jill, whole life. Well, Jill, we can't crazy. hear it all now, but I know what happened. You ended up then as a single mum. You had two kids. You then had your kid with him. I know you were visiting him in prison. I know you're no longer with him, but life moves on. So what we want to say, because lots of people want, want to hear the full story, because it's unbelievable. It's Stolen Hearts podcast, and you can yeah. listen to that uh, incredible story. Make it into a film, Jill, because I know I want to watch it. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.